Okay, hi, hello friends. I'm really happy to see everybody. Um, we, I have an incredible privilege tonight and that is that I'm going live with one of our um, past Botox um, patients. And her name is Heather and it was incredibly, oh, there she is, so I'm gonna invite her to join us. Okay, there we go. Heather did the Botox treatment two years ago. She's an incredibly lovely person. She's also an incredibly strong person. Um, I think you're gonna love it. Hi, Heather. <laughs> you look so pretty. Oh, thank you. So do you. Thank you. So thank I know you. people are super, super excited about meeting you. I'm just gonna back up a little so you can see better. Um, people are really, really excited to see you. Uh, people are really excited. They ask a ton of questions, which I think you're just gonna answer naturally in your talk. Yeah. Um, I started introducing you. Um, Heather suffered with vaginismus, pretty severe vaginismus for 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. She did the Botox treatment two years ago. Um, what made me sort of say, oh my God, we have to have you on was an incredibly powerful email you sent us. Um, it wasn't an email, it was a forum. We have a, we have a vaginismus forum and on the forum, she talked about her story in the most beautiful, powerful way. Talk about the fact that she doesn't have to dilate anymore, which is like everybody's, everybody's dream at the end of the rainbow, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so let's just dive right in. Let's just talk about like how you knew you had vaginismus and what it was like. Let's start with that. Okay. So, um, I found out when I was pretty young, I knew I was different when I was in seventh grade and I had my period and I wanted to go swimming and my mom said it would be best if I used a tampon. And I knew right off the bat that I just like, I was like, I don't know what goes in. That kind of scares me. So I think what started my vaginismus was a fear of my own body. Um, I was never harmed by anybody. I didn't grow up in a really strict household. It wasn't anything like that. It was when I learned about my vagina, it just scared me. Like period scared me, tampon scared me, um, hymen popping really scared me. And when I learned all these things, I was like, wow, it really sucks to be a girl. And I just thought, I thought that when I got older, it it would go away, I would grow out of it, and that um, I would be able to do all those things, but that fear just stuck with me, and I think it really, like, did the damage, and when I was in seventh grade, I was scared of tampons. Um, when I got older in high I school, say, I, I want to say something. First of all, you're getting a lot of love, it's a lot of love coming through here, and I just want to repeat <laughs> something that Heather said, because I think it's so important for people to hear. There wasn't any sexual abuse in her history. There was no nope. terribly strict upbringing. For whatever reason, kids have fears, people have fears for whatever reason, this fear of her body, this fear of her vagina and her vulva, for whatever reason, it, it was there and it just grew. So now you can keep talking. I may interrupt you once in a while, your story is so powerful, but I might want to reiterate something you say. So, um, yeah, so when I got into high school, my girlfriends would always talk about tampons and their boyfriends and the things that they would do with them and fingering and all that and I just knew like that kind of stuff really scared me I didn't want any part of that um I just chalked it up to I'm still young I'm still maturing this isn't something I'm into doing right now and that's fine because I'm young so when I got into a serious relationship with my now husband um trying sex was really difficult um I thought initially it was just the fear of penetration and I did get over that I got a finger in and I was like good I'm cured like this is it I'm good now like I can put anything in there. And um, I thought that's where it ended. I thought just the fear of the penetration, the fear of my vagina just ended once I got that first step of getting my finger in. So um, we old, tried sex. How, how old were you when you, when you were able to um, get a finger? Senior year of high school. Senior year of high school, so 17. Um, and we tried. Yeah, we've been together for a long time. Um, but we tried, and it was just so painful. Like, I did get him fully in there once and it was excruciating. So um, I was like, okay, I don't know, we'll try again. I, I heard it hurts for your first time, but I'll give it another shot. And we just kept trying and we kept trying and it was just so painful and it was just so discouraging. I didn't want to try anymore. I was like, there's no way. And I went to a gynecologist and she's like, you know, you're, you're normal, but you do have vaginismus. I could see the tone she could feel it. All she did was put her pinky in there and she gave me muscle relaxers too. And it was still like really relentless. It was still fighting her. 
And she's like, you got to go to physical therapy. And I was like, all right, but if I'm like too scared to put anything bigger than a finger in myself right now, I was too scared to go to a physical therapist, so I didn't. And when so, you dropped all, so was it hard to talk to the doctor about it? She basically just told me that I should have a glass of wine and just use a lot of lube. And that's a lot of the responses I got from everybody. I can't tell you how often that's what patients say they're told by their doctors. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes it's really hard for patients even to go see the doctor. See, you're getting all these cards mm -hmm. coming out because people can totally relate. But sometimes just even making that first appointment with the doctor is so scary. So I don't know if that was yep. scary for you too. Yeah. Yeah, I was only comfortable with myself putting a finger in. And then when I had to make an appointment with her and she told me that she had to do an internal exam, I was petrified. And she understood, so that's why she gave me the muscle relaxers. But even that didn't work. Um, and then for a while, I just put it off. So I was just like, it'll resolve itself over time. I didn't want to deal with it. I just pushed it aside. I didn't want to deal with it. And I suffered for 10 years. Were, were um, you having other kinds of sex with your, with, your, with your now husband, but partner then? Were you guys yeah. having a good sex life at least? Okay. Yeah, we were. And the good thing is, too, is that um, he had never been with anybody else, so he had never even experienced sex. In so divorce, he did. In divorce, you were having sex? In he had divorce. never been with person. Yes. Um, so you were having so oral sex and your vowels, hands, you were doing everything else? Yeah. Yep. Um, we have been very comfortable with each other from day one, and he never once pushed me or um, pressured me or got mad at me or anything like that. Um, so that's why I got away with it for so long, pushing it off. But um, it started to get to me, not even to him. It's just everybody who knows this, who deals with this, knows that it is a constant daily reminder, you know, songs about sex sex in movies, sex in TVs, sex in magazines, everyone talks about sex it's everywhere. So it's a, a constant daily reminder of what you can't do. And it got to the point where I was having nightmares every night that my husband would leave me. And in these nightmares, he would tell me, I don't want to be with you because we can't have intercourse. I don't want to be with you. I'm going to leave you for someone who does. And, and I it was want, just, I, why you, I, first of all, people are saying like how strong you are, which you are for sharing the story and for having gone through mm -hmm. all of this. But this, this idea, what you describe, this feeling like it's always there. I hear that all the way with patients, this, mm -hmm. this feeling like you're walking around this black cloud. Like some people might say, well, mm -hmm. it's just intercourse. Like what's the big deal, you know, but it somehow makes you feel damaged, right? It does. It, it, I didn't feel, I, everyone would tell me that you are, but I never felt like a woman. I never felt like 100% woman and I never had this connection with my body. I, that part of me always felt dead. It felt like I had no control. Um, and everything I did try, I just couldn't succeed at. Um, I don't suggest this to anybody, to anybody. It does not solve anything, but I tried um, heavy alcohol consumption. Um, I had some leftover pain pillar painkillers pain pillars from one of um the surgeries that I had and I tried I was like you know maybe if I just take one an hour prior I'll be okay didn't work um nothing worked the dilation too I think it was the year that I decided to commit to treating my vaginismus um in 2018 it was in January and I bought the dilation kit offline um with the book and the dvds and I could only get the third one in, which isn't that big. And it was just painful. Every day it was painful. I just, I couldn't do it. I was getting so frustrated. I wasn't making progress. And I felt that there was no end in sight. So one day I just Googled, I can't cure my vaginismus. And May's Women's Health came up. I read their forum for hours. I think I read every single one that day. And then I called them immediately. I just want you to know, in case people don't know, so on our website, on our general website, we have the vaginismus forum specifically for this reason, because women who have vaginismus feel so terribly alone and like they're the worst case and everything. And so the forum is just women talking to each other about this. So now we keep going. Yeah, so um, I did put it off for a long time, but once, you know, it just, it's such a mental toll. It's such a mental toll. And obviously I wanted that with my husband, you know, I'm now 25. Um, I wanted that. And most women want kids, you know, they want to get married. And when you have vaginismus, there's that fear that no one's going to love you. There's that fear that you'll never be able to have children. It's a terrifying thing. And I had all these thoughts on my head and 
I just wanted it all to stop. I wanted, I, at this point in my life, not so much the intercourse is what I wanted, is I just wanted the stress of it to just go away. The heaviness that I felt every single day and the pressure I put on myself to get it cured. So um, then I found Maze and I learned about the Botox procedure and I made the call. How hard was it to make that call? <laughs> Very easy. Very easy. Um, they answered right away. I meant, I, had my little... I meant emotionally for you. How hard was it to make the call? Not hard. Not hard. This Once I decided to commit to this Botox procedure, it sounds weird, but it's one of my favorite memories. I love it. I love talking about it. It's weird, but that was my best weekend. I loved it. Every step of it, I loved. It was just like, like, yes. You were doing something and you were taking control of your body. I think that's amazing. So talk yeah, about because that. After, huh? I talk more about that. Yeah. After fighting my body for so long, never being able to win, I was like, I cannot do this on my own. And some women can, and that's incredible. Mine was just, I had so much fear. Ever since I was little, I always associated vaginas with pain because of everything that I heard. So um, it, it was really hard for me to overcome that fear. Um, and I felt like I wasn't able to do it. So when I found out that someone was going to help me with that and take a huge weight off my shoulders and help me like a huge crutch in this, in the work that I had ahead of me, I was like, absolutely. I want to do it. So talk about the weekend. So the weekend, I loved it. So, um, I'm in New Hampshire. I'm not too far from New York, uh, four hours. And we found a really nice hotel in New Jersey, maybe like 12 minutes away. And um, so when I went to get the Botox procedure, I had all my paperwork done. The anesthesiologist had already taken care of all of my concerns. Um, everyone, all the staff at the Mays Women's Health Center, they made sure I was well prepared, that I knew exactly what to do, where to go, how to be prepared. Um, I knew everything going in, so I wasn't nervous there. Um, when I went, the staff were really nice. Um, I was expecting a hospital type facility. I didn't know it wasn't like your basic hospital, um, beautiful waiting room. And then when they pull you in, you have this chair in this corner of the room, all private sectioned off. And, um, it's not a bed, it's just a chair, but you're comfy. They make sure you're cozy. They give you a blanket if you're cold. It was nice. And, um, Melissa came in and she explained how everything was going to go. And then she tells me Botox doesn't kick in for two weeks. And I was like, what? Like, oh, how am I supposed to, to do days? To be fair, it's three to five days. It doesn't kick in for three oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's irrelevant in this case. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, but she was like, it doesn't kick in right away. And I'm like, oh, geez. And she told me, she's like, before you leave, I want you to take the largest size dilator out. It's already going to be inside. I want you to take it out and put it back in. And I'm like, oh, my God, I was so scared for that. I didn't know. I didn't know anything about the Botox procedure before I was going into it. I didn't hear anybody's stories. I just read a little bit on the forum, but I didn't know what it entailed. So when she was like, um, there's dilating in, involved, I was like, what? No. But when I woke up, it wasn't awkward, by the way. I saw that in one of the questions. It wasn't awkward. It wasn't painful at all. They were so nice, so gentle, so caring, met all of my needs. I even told um, the doctor that I do get really nauseous and sick when I wake up from anesthesia. So before I even went under, they gave me a little bit of like anti-nausea medication and I woke up just fine. Um, it was a very short procedure. I had a hymenectomy as well. Um, Melissa said that my hymen was just like really thick and there was no way that my husband would have been able to break it. So it was good that I got that done. Um, they did a exam too, which was really good. Um, I like knowing that I'm healthy and it was really nice to know that my first, um, speculum I didn't have to experience. So I loved that. I loved that they were checking to make sure I was healthy. Um, and then they, you just walk into your room, you walk in, you lay on the table, and within a couple seconds, I was out. And then um, before I knew it, Melissa was waking me up saying it's time to get going. And um, her and a nurse came in, 
they got me cleaned up. And then she's like, I'd like you to take the dilator out. And I remember feeling for it. And I was like, oh, oh my God, that's actually in me. It was just mind blowing. I was so happy though. I was like laughing hysterically just because I was in such relief. And I and you told my husband. It. And you weren't even feeling no. it. I'm, I'm, no, because I, I was tell you, I'm crying a little bit as you're telling the story because, and you know, obviously I see this a lot, right? But um, you know, I'm not usually in the room and I, but the one or two that I have been in the room as we were training many years ago, it was so powerful when the women woke up and they're like, oh my God, I have something inside of me. Do I actually have a vagina? Is it still, is it really working? Like, is it normal? Am I okay? You know, like that's, and it's so, so powerful. And I cannot tell you how many people are running through here saying, thank you so much for sharing this because it really is unbelievable. I, I, I want to add in something about the hymen, the hymenectomy. I can't tell you how many women come to me who've been sent for a hymenectomy under anesthesia and still have vaginismus. So it's really oh. important to understand that those are two different things, right? Your vaginal muscles, the introidal muscles, the entry muscles tighten up so you can't get anything in. That's separate from having a very thick hymen. Um, sometimes both occur. And then, you know, people who can get something in, but it feels like something is kind of stuck, but there's no pain, often have that hymen issue. We just take care of it all at the same time, if that's the case. So yeah, just wanted to throw, explain that. But anyway, you're waking up. Melissa's there. She says, take out the big... Melissa is the, is the associate medical director. And she's, she basically, beside... Michael Warner does the actual injection, but Melissa does everything else. So go on. Yeah, I was really excited, too, because all this time I had been talking to Melissa. I didn't know I'd get to meet her. So that was really nice, too, because she had been the woman that I had been talking to for a couple months planning this. So she already knew everything. So when she came in, we were already familiar. It was great. Um, so when I woke up, um, I was laughing. I was like, wow, this is cool. I had my husband come over. I was like, look, look, like it's inside of me. This is crazy. And she told me to take it out and put it back in. And I was nervous. I was like, is this going to hurt? I don't know. I know I was numb, but I was still really nervous, but I took it out and I put it back in like nothing. It was just so simple. There was no pain, not even one little bit of pain. And, um, she told me, she's like, you're, vaginismus case was really bad because while I was under anesthesia the anesthesiologist had to administer more anesthesia because my muscles were still working against the doctor and my legs were trying to clamp shut on him that's how bad my case was so the, what you need to do is that these are not I'm saying this to everybody else you know this already Heather these are not muscles you can control like when you get a back spasm you can't really control the back spasm right so some people just, they have these involuntary muscle contractions that are incredible. And, and yes, so if you're listening to this and you're thinking, which I'm sure there are, you know, of the 30 people watching, I'm sure that there's going to be 20 people who are saying, she couldn't have been as bad as me. Trust me, she was. Okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah, mine was pretty bad. Um, but when I left, I had to, I actually have them with me. Um, this was the blue one. She, when I was done my procedure, um, I had to keep this one in the entire car ride in New York City, which not comfortable, not comfortable. But um, we got to our hotel room and I was laying in bed with the dilator inside and I was just like all smiles. I was like, finally, this is over. The next day, um, my husband and I, we went to the Mays Women's Health facility and we spoke with a couple sex therapists as well as Melissa and she had me dilate in front of her and she showed me exactly how to do it. She gave me a schedule. She made sure I was doing it properly. And she taught me a really nice um, technique too, um, to get my, the best, you know, um, physical therapy with my dilator. She wanted to make sure I was doing it hundred percent correctly, um, which I was really shocked. I didn't know that this Botox procedure would come with so many helpful tools to make sure that I really overcome this. It was not a, they got me in, they Botoxed me and they got me out type of deal. It was- I think that's really important because uh, some other places are starting to do Botox, which is amazing. And we always try to train people and help people when they want to do it. But I cannot believe the number of doctors who bring you in, give you the Botox, don't give you dialers, send you home. It's not going to do anything. The Botox takes mm -hmm. three to five days to kick in at least, sometimes maybe six, but usually not. But there's so many other variables to this because you need to have broken the, we have sort of broken that 
that tension of the muscle and keep it unbroken for a few days until the Botox kicks in. Uh, yes, exactly. Like that is, that's like sending somebody home from surgery with no physical therapy. That's like said, doing knee surgery with no physical therapy. It's so crazy. Okay, you can keep talking. I was so grateful for all the tools that they gave me. Um, it was wonderful. Like they really did take their time with me. Melissa did take her time with me to make sure that I knew what I was doing with dilating. And um, she gave me a schedule and then the portal too. The portal was really nice. I could message Melissa anytime I wanted to on that portal and she would answer right away. She always answered. So it was, I always had a doctor. I always had support from the forum. Um, it made the aftercare at home so much better. And the visit that me and my husband had with the sex therapists after I had my visit with Melissa was great too, because they just, they cleared everything up for me and my husband. Um, we just, we talked about sex. We talked about my vaginismus. We talked about everything. And they gave me some really good mental tools too, to take home with me to battle this vaginismus. And it was a really great experience. Um, it took me 39 days. Um, I saw on the forum, I actually counting? got a little discouraged. Like, but who's counting? Like 39 days. That's very, you know, that's amazing. They have, uh, right, 39 days versus, you know. Say, say that again? 39 days versus, um, 39 days, not years. 39 days versus 10 years. That's not much. Not at all. Mm -hmm. and, and people are interested in what happened when you went home. Like, what was the after situation? Like, was there pain afterwards? Was it really hard dilating? Um, so the pain that I experienced wasn't in my vagina. I felt kind of like a cramping pain as kind of like a period, but like a little bit tighter. I don't really know what that was from, but it went away after a couple days. Um, but in my vagina, I didn't have pain. And Melissa did give me some lidocaine to mix with my lube when I got home for a couple days, just because I did have a hymenectomy things were a little bit like sore down there and she didn't want me to be discouraged during dilation. So she set me up. She really did. She gave me a lot of lidocaine and she's like, you know, if you need more, um, you can ask your gynecologist or you can come to me, but I didn't need it. The aftercare at home. Um, she told me for the first two weeks, she wanted me to sleep with a blue dilator in and I tried to, but I'm not a back sleeper. I'm a belly sleeper and I roll around a lot and it's not comfortable to roll around with a dilator inside of you. So I would attempt it and halfway through the night, I would just get this urge to roll over. So I would just end up taking it out and getting comfortable so I could get a good night's sleep. But I did try. Um, I just could never finish a night, never. Um, but the dilation did not hurt. Um, there was times where it was uncomfortable, like a little bit of a burning sensation, but it, it wasn't super painful. It was not as painful as it was before I got my Botox procedure. Um, it was just like stretching uh, and it did take my time with it because um, doing it every single day, I would do it for about an hour. Doing it every day was uh, really tiring. So there were occasions where I took one to two days off for my mental so well-being. So I need to say to most people listening, we do not require an hour every day. Heather is just like a super overachiever. Let's just say. What? Yeah. I just I was extra with it. Yeah, we tell people like I, 20 minutes, just so you know. So like, don't, you know, but you know what? Heather, it worked for Heather. So what happened after 39 days? Um, It was actually two days after Christmas, which was really cool. Um, I was like, you know what? I think today's the day. I was at work. I was like, I, I've been doing really good with my progress. I think today's the day. Later that night, we were at home and I was dilating and right after dilation, I was just like, you know, do you want to try? And he said, yes. And we did. And it worked. I mean, in the beginning, sex isn't really that fun because you, you do have to dilate first. And that's, that's kind of boring. Um, because I would go right from dilation to sex to make sure that I was intercourse. to make sure that I was, you know, loose and ready so um, in the beginning, it wasn't that fun. And we also, we did have to learn because we've both never done that before. Um, I didn't know what worked for me. He didn't know what worked. So um, it was a learning curve for the both of us. But now, today, two years later, um, our sex lives are great. And I don't have to dilate every single day anymore. Beforehand, um, I went from having to dilate right before intercourse 
Um, then I moved up until um, I could do it in the morning and get away with having sex later that night and I'd be okay. And then eventually I just stopped dilating altogether and just tried it. And I haven't used my dilators in a long time. It's amazing. It's amazing. And could you have imagined six years ago? Like what, what, would, you, what would your six year, what would you say to yourself if you were talking to yourself six years ago? What would I say? Um, oh, I would have told myself to get this procedure done. Like, eight. it's it's crazy because I didn't know about it um, until I Googled. I can't cure my vaginismus. But I feel like if more women knew about May's women, you know, because this entire time that I suffered, I would always Google things. I just never found you guys. I, I swear so I did not pay her. I did not pay her to be an advertisement here at all. I promise. I no. This May's women was my crutch in all of this because I couldn't I couldn't progress on my own. It was really difficult. Um, so that Botox that really gave me the boost that I needed to finish my physical therapy at home. That's what made this all possible. And I stuck with it. I did an hour because um, I would do my dilation for 20 minutes. And then I just wanted my body to be um, accustomed to the dilator. I wanted everything to get used to having something in there. So I'd put a movie on and just watch a movie with it just being in there, not moving it, just being in there, just because I wanted to do all the extra work that I could to make sure that I set myself up for success, you know? Yeah, I'm gonna and what I, I'm just looking at all the questions we got. So one person did ask, like psychologically, how do you feel like after the procedure? Because I always say the work part of the work is done with the procedure, but the second part of the work is getting your brain and your vagina to be talking to each other, and that's work that has to be done afterwards. So, can you talk yeah. about that? So, um, what Melissa explained to me is part of what the Botox does for you too is when your muscles are like frozen and dilation and sex is possible it kind of that teaches you right then and there that this is good this is happening this can happen your body is capable you're seeing it for yourself you're doing it and um that's supposed to help show you like it's okay um but mine was really psychological so um i did have to do a little bit more work with myself in that aspect i would just talk to myself and give myself pep talks like, this is my body. I'm in control and I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna hurt me. I'm gonna go at my speed. I take care of myself and I'm gonna make sure that every step of the way of this, I've got myself and I'm not gonna put myself in pain. I'm just gonna do what feels right by my body and listen to my body and take care of myself. And that's been my best defense is just listening to my body. When it needed a break, I gave it a break, you know? Heather, I wish I could bottle what you just said, because that, is, I may actually, I think that's exactly the message we want people to tell themselves during all this, which is, I'm going to go at my own pace, I'm going to take care of myself, and my mm -hmm. and my vagina can learn to speak to each other. And part of that is knowing that you're putting something in and taking it out, and it's not hurting. So that is yes. so powerful. Another thing that um, I found really cool, too, after... Um, the muscle tone kind of went away is um, I saw a physical therapist for a little while afterwards because after my Botox wore off and stuff like that I was still experiencing a little bit of pain um, and I went but to a physical therapist. I'm going to interrupt one second I want you to talk about this but two people have now asked what does the Botox actually do so I want to say that when we go in there and when the patient's under um, the physician goes in the muscle, I'm gonna take off my wedding ring, although I lost it once, your intraoral muscle is not much bigger than this. It's a tiny muscle, but it's really, really, it's, it should be able to be pliable and open, but for some women it gets stuck because it's it's so tense. So he he un, he sort of climps it, he just pulls at it and the muscle gives, and then he injects in the vagina, both Novocaine and Botox. And what Botox does is eventually it makes the muscles temporarily for a few months, like six months, freeze. That's why people like it for, um, for not frowning, right? If you have muscles and you can't, you can't frown, right? It doesn't allow those frowns. You can't get those muscle lines, right? If the muscles don't tighten up. So Botox makes you unable to tense those muscles. And that is why it's so helpful during those months when you're learning how to do the, um, the, the, the dilation. So that explains how the Botox works. But 
it's all part of a process, right? It's the, it's the, it's the internal Novocaine, the pain thing, the, the breaking the muscle spasm, the intern, inserting the dilator, the whole thing together works, which is why it works. But I'm gonna let you get back now because you said you were going to physical therapy. Yeah, so um, I experienced a little bit of pain afterwards, um, and she checked me out. I saw a gynecologist first because you have to go through those steps before they can refer you to a physical therapist. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was healthy after my procedure because it had been some months now. We were having intercourse, and I wanted to make sure that I was healthy. Um, so she said everything looked fine. You got so it. she referred me. You got a speculum in with no problem? Yeah. Yeah, um, very easy, actually. Very, very easy. Way easier than dilating. You can't even feel it. You I couldn't up. even feel it. I want people to hear that. All the people listening with that to dismiss, you too can put in a tampon, get a gynecological exam. It's possible. Just, okay, go on. Now, I'm sorry I keep it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so the physical therapist said that I had no muscle tone. I was fine. Um, everything looked great. My muscles were great. Um, everything was the way it's supposed to be. She just said that my problem probably was just my lube. So um, that actually, out of all this, the, pr the procedure and stuff, finding a lube that was good for my body was the hardest part. What'd you because find? I'm sensitive to everything. What did you say? Um, I have it right here, actually. This, it's Trojan H2O Sensitive Touch. I have bought probably like a thousand bottles of these, and I bought the most expensive stuff you could find on all these websites and this guy is at cvs the last place i would have looked but it, it works yeah good for you so that yeah yeah so, so you went to um, therapy in the end or you didn't go i did um i only went a couple times she gave me some really good helpful tips to do at home just for some upkeep um and she also explained something to me that i really liked so you know how like your hand is really squishy when you do this that's like how your vagina is supposed to be. But she's like with vaginismus, like when you have sex, it's like this. That so it's very great. That is great. Yeah. I know Melissa talks, Melissa again, who's the um, associate medical director, she talks about people's, um, the vagina openings feeling like they're piano strings. But that's a really good way that they're taught like piano strings. And that's yes. exactly, yes, that's a great way to describe it. My best advice is after vaginismus. So I wanted to connect myself again to my body. So what I did was I just put my finger in there and I felt around and I'm like, okay, this is all normal. This is part of my body. This is part of myself and it's safe and I'm safe with it. And I'm not, nothing's going to hurt it. Everything's okay. Um, and this is my body. And just doing that reconnected my mind with my body. It was um, a more intimate like thing with myself more than a pep talk. It was reassurance like, and it did feel different. It didn't feel like tight anymore. I, I did feel a difference after everything was said and done and squared away and I haven't dilated. It does feel a lot different in there. And um, a big part of the dilation too, when I went to physical therapy is she said to massage the opening, you can use your tiniest dilator or your finger, whatever you feel more comfortable with, and just lightly go in circles around the opening just to like desensitize it because that's the hardest part when you're dilating is the opening doesn't, it kind of hurts sometimes when you get that um, muscle tension. Um, so just relaxing and massaging it with your tiniest dilator or your finger, it's so helpful. It calms those muscles down and then dilation is a breeze. So I loved that. She gave me that tool to take home and it was just so helpful. Somebody just wrote, ladies, you will get there. She never believed she would. And here we are sharing sex stories. You will gain control of your body. I wonder if it's your friend. Your mom jumped in. By the way. What? Yeah. There's a couple of people here for me watching tonight. Um, my sister, my mom, mom and two of my best. sisters. She was like, yay, go Heather. And just the fact that your mom was such a good part of the story. It's just so lovely um and um we have to kind of end is there anything you else you feel like you want to say that you feel like you wish you could tell people because there are people watching who have vaginismus and are feeling hopeless probably and so what what would you like to say um i would definitely say don't push it off like i did 
um, because the weight that lifts off your shoulders and not being reminded constantly of this horrible thing day to day and just being able to feel free from it. That is the most rewarding feeling. And it is so, so curable. It really is. Um, if you're like me and your case is just really relentless, the Botox procedure, I, I would recommend to anybody. It was just so beneficial. And now this is a thing in my past. I don't have to stress it anymore. And sex is really worth it. It's a lot of fun. And um, it's a really nice experience with somebody you love. It does make a deeper connection and well intercourse. Um, I didn't correct but, you with that, but I get it. <laughs> it's credible. There's so many tools to help you too. Also, um, if you don't jump right towards the Botox procedure, um, look up the yoga stretches for the pelvic floor muscles. I would do that all the time and the breathing techniques for dilation. Um, basically you just fill up your stomach with oxygen instead of your lungs. And that kind of opens up your vagina more. So getting a dilator in is uh, more comfortable. It really works. Um, the yoga stretches, the vaginal massages and um, breathing techniques and just making sure that you feel safe with yourself first. That is the key. So you want to reassure yourself that you're in your own hands and you won't hurt yourself and it is curable. And and the forum. Are you, I think you're on the forum a lot these days, right? You try to help other women. Do you... I'm a moderator, actually. Yeah, so Heather's a moderator. So, I'm... so if you have questions and stuff, you can post them on the forum. If you go to May's Women's Health and you go to the Veg Business Forum. Um, so I think it's amazing. Um, all right, well, I thank you so much, Heather. I think it takes a lot of guts to talk about this. I don't think it should because we should be a society where everybody talks about this stuff, but we're in a society mm -hmm. where it's hard for people to talk about it. And you're uh, incredibly brave, but also just articulate and um, obviously caring person. So thank you so, so much. Oh, of course. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, have a good night. And again, if you mm -hmm. guys have questions for Heather, you can go to the Maze Forum and just dial in Heather and, uh, and she'll respond or you could just, uh, you know, email me and um, I'll forward it over to, or DM me or something, or you can DM Heather. All right. Yeah, don't I'm gonna right, don't kiss. Wait, what'd you say? I said, don't be shy. Okay. Can ask me anything. You want to give them your Instagram handle if somebody wants to direct message you? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. It's, um, oh it's man. It's Leo. It's Leo. I know it. It's Leo. Leo underscore, underscore. sweetheart underscore xo because i had to be extra with it couldn't be simple but yeah leo underscore sweetheart underscore xo seriously i'm not shy about this at all it's we're all human so anything anything really i want to help all right so on that note i'm gonna blow your kiss and say good night okay bye thank you heather bye bye of course bye